I wanna get better at taking trading losses. No, you don't. I actually, I had um, a conversation at the beginning of the week with a trader who worked at a tier one bank who uh, wants to trade here. He was doing, he wasn't, full, he wasn't making a lot of trade decisions. He was sort of assisting traders. And, um, you know, tier one bank, really good bank, really smart guy. And I asked him, what is he interested in? And, and he mentioned he's very interested in trading psychology. And uh, started, he made a pretty big mistake at that point and started to explain to me um, the psychology you actually need as a trader. <laughs> if anyone actually is trying to get a job at our firm or David's firm, never ever talk to somebody who actually does this for a living based upon what you've read in a book that was written 30 years ago. Like, don't, don't do that. Don't make that mistake. Okay? Um, and, and, you know, he was saying all the things that people say which drive Merritt and myself crazy as traders when they think about successful trading, you know, which is hey, all you got to do is just be calm. And if you learn how to be calm, you're going to make a lot of money. It's like, that, that's, first of all, that's completely wrong. <clears throat> Second of all, you know, why don't you actually try trading for a living, okay, and see if you can be calm, you know, all the time. You see if you can be calm when, you know, the futures are down, limit down after the election. And, it's, and so you don't want to actually get better at trading losses. The problem is, is that when people get this wrong, most negative trade psychology comes when you trade without an edge. You don't have an edge. I'm not happy when I, I'm down money. I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm not happy. Why would I be happy about that? Oh, this is great. I'm down $1,500 today. Well, this, this is awesome. Let's go get a bagel. <laughs> That doesn't, you know, I just, you know what, I just lost, guys, I just lost 20 trades in a row in the same stock. You know, I kept hitting it on the short side and all it does is go up. What a day. What a day. You know, I would be pissed. And, and I should be pissed. And what those emotions are telling me is I should stop doing what I'm doing. I should stop fading a stock that's really strong. My emotions, I shouldn't be calm about that. That's irrational. I actually think that's psychotic. You should take that emotional information that's coming to you and use it positively, use it constructively. And the way you use it constructively is, is to, to measure what your emotions tell you about your trading. And so uh, for me, uh, if I get a little bit upset about a particular stock, it tends to mean the stock is spready. It tends to mean I have trouble controlling my risk. And, and there are some other things that I learned. But I've learned me getting upset means about my trading and I use that information to make better trade decisions. Sometimes I have to get up and go take a 10 minute walk. That's a great habit to get into. You, you notice yourself getting a little flustered and a little bit hot, go walk around Manhattan, go get a Starbucks, go get a Dunkin' Donuts, okay, go get a bagel. Go get a bag of chips, go get an apple, whatever you gotta do, call your girlfriend, call your husband, whatever you gotta do, just chill, you know, reset. <clears throat> but, you know, I, I, I just always think that's terrible advice that you should be calm at all times. And so, you know, we're gonna talk, we, we actually, in January, um, as part of doing this survey, there were, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but there were two needs from the community. Uh, one was how to develop a trading plan and one were strategies that work. And that to me fits in really nicely to I want to get better at trading losses. No, you do not want to get better at taking trading losses. You want to get actually better at trading. You want to actually get better at trading trades with edge, okay, for you. So don't let anyone tell you that. All right, I do not have a trading plan. So we're working on this right now. There are you know, our five top traders are working with a high level trading coach on building their trading plan for 2017. The things that they're thinking about for developing a trading plan are, hey, what are your strengths? Hey, what are your weaknesses? Hey, 
What is your motivation for trading? Hey, where are your opportunities that you see in 2017? Where do you see potential stumbling blocks in 2017? The, the point of all of that is for traders to understand what they do well and try and do a little bit more of that and what they do poorly and try and do a little bit less of that. And then, in a, you know, so one of the things that comes up, I'm, I'm involved in this process as well. So these five traders are working with a high level trading coach and, and I'm sort of a bridge between uh, these traders uh, and, the, and the coach. And I'm offering my feedback to the traders about the ways that they can improve to go from, you know, even from, from really good to even better. And, you know, one of the things that keeps coming up is guys want to get better with uh, something internally which we call uh, single stock scripts. Uh, this, these are, this is a technology that enables traders to play more offense. If you have a trade, a setup that you really like, um, there is sort of this hybrid where you don't necessarily make it into an automated trading model, but what you do is uh, the technology allows you to enter the position and then you can exit out of the position. And so if you are able to trade four trades, four stocks at the same time, four positions at the same time, what uh, single stock scripts allow you to do is maybe trade 10 because now you don't have to get into the other six. All you have to do is manage out of six. It's much easier to manage out of positions than it is to get into the position and manage out of positions. And so, you know, the traders are like, well, I want to get better at this. But, you know, one of the common themes that we don't see is that they don't have scheduled on their calendar a time for them to work on technology. And this may seem simple, but even the best traders don't think about they're not going to actually do this until they actually put on their calendar when they're going to work on these things. These are very active traders who work very hard and at five o'clock after they've spent all day trading, sometimes they want to get up and leave. And that can happen day after day. You got to put on your calendar the time you're going to work on single stock scripts if you want to get better at single stock scripts, if you want to actually be able to trade and play more offense. And so, you know, Merritt, you've actually seen my calendar. It tends to get more and more uh, specific and filled up as I go along. But I need to do that. I need to set, I need to have spell all that out. If you want to be productive, you got to plan. And so that's just an example of one of the things. Um, one of the things we're going to do a little bit later is have Merritt talk a little bit about one of, the, one of the things that we've sat around and, and, and thought about, all right, here are some of the problems that guys are having in the community. How do we help them? And one of the ways that we can do is sort of say, well, here's what we're doing internally. Let's help you to build the trading plan. And you know, let's give you an opportunity to sit down with Merritt for half an hour and start to devise a trading plan for you so that you can make progress in 2017. And a lot of people who uh, want to get better in 2017 say they want to get better. And the question is, well, how? And are you willing to actually put the time? Are you willing to invest in the proper resources for you to get better? You can get better. You can get better. There are dozens of traders who walk around these halls who at one point stunk. There are you know, traders around here who maybe they didn't stink but they weren't that good who got really good and the way they do it is we plan it out. We, un we get them to understand what their strengths are and we oversee it and we organize it and we plan it and we work on it on a daily basis. So. We're all doing it here, and uh, Merritt will help you a little bit about, help you a little bit later about developing a trading plan. I do not have a trading edge. So Dr. Steenbarger wrote this post this morning about uh, developing your trading playbook, and I'm going to get up because I actually can't read it from over here. But what I thought was really most interesting about this is he wrote. Here's one you can take to the bank. The most successful traders can talk in detail about the patterns that they perceive in markets and how they have traded those patterns. 
The patterns make sense to them and represent some manner in which markets are offsides and thus offer a favorite reward relative to risk. The least successful traders talk about catching moves in markets and are not focused on particular patterns or setups. They let market movement define opportunity rather than allow their definition of opportunity guide their involvement in the market. And I, you know, I have conversations with traders all the time on desks and I don't understand when people say, oh, I missed that trade. Oh, I missed oil pulling in. Oh, what does that mean? Like that's not the way successful traders talk. Successful traders say, there's a bear flag. We're going into the, into the close. I know that there's a million to buy and my risk is 84 cents and I want to buy it in the base at 91 cents, half and half at 86 and buy a little bit above the hole and hold it into the close. That's a trade. It's got a good technical pattern. It's, it's, it's got a news catalyst behind it. It's got, uh, I, it's got, I've got a little bit of edge because I know there's going to be a buy imbalance coming into this thing. That's trade. People make trades. They have variables. They have names. They, they work relative to people's talents. You know, oh, I missed the market going down. I don't know what that means, but I do know that IWM was sitting between 133 and 132.30 and we were sitting talking to Seth about this and Seth and I were having a long conversation about whether or not IWM was going to pull in after being up 15 straight days. And I said to him, there's a technical resistance level at 133 based upon these very important factors and the damn thing keeps bouncing off of 132.30 and if we can get below there and go sideways for a particular period of time and we can start to see some of the weakness in a couple other particular areas, we can get price, we can get time, we can get below a technical level, we have a trade on. Yesterday we had uh, a little bit of uh, a, a, a push to the downside and then today we had a, a bigger push to the downside as well. But that's a technical trade. All right, that, that has variables to it. I can talk, if you, if you talk to me like that, I understand you. I don't understand you when you tell me, oh, the market went down. I missed it. I don't know what that means. It, it actually doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> so, you know, when we talk about trading edge, we're always talking about, ver everyone has, everything has a name, and each individual trader gives it different names. Even on the option side, everything has a name. And they're just strategies that are definable. And then your job is to figure out whether or not you can trade them, whether or not they fit your personality. You gotta practice them, you'll get better at them time by time. When you have success, you slowly push yourself outside of your comfort zone. You incorporate technology to find more trades like that and you put some buying power to work. You know, it's my job to tell, to tell you, when you have edge in something, go for it. And that's our job. So let me talk about a trade where I have edge in and why. So today I traded this EXPR and as you can see from the news, there was a news catalyst. All this red means bad, but the operating margins were 3% versus 8%. I've said to you guys before, one of the keywords, one of the headlines for stocks that we want to actually trade are uh, companies that report that their margins are getting worse. When their margins are getting worse, that means that what they're actually making, they're making less money on. That's not good for a business. Okay, they're making a lot less on what they actually make than they did the day before. And that surprised the street. The, the street did not, the, the, did not suspect that their operating margins were actually gonna come in this light. And then the CEO says, we expect the holiday season to remain challenging. So going ahead, we see challenging times remaining as mall traffic and a highly promotional retail environment continue to be headwinds. That's, headwinds are not good. Headwinds are bad. Okay, so they cut for the full year from 106 to 78 versus 82. That's almost 25%. So their margins are worse. That gets me very interested. That's a big news catalyst. They've missed for the full year. That gets me very interested. That's a lot of data for me to trade off of. I'm not going to own that stock. If I have a position in that, I'm a mutual fund, I'm getting out of that. If I look at something like that on a short-term basis and I see a chart pattern 
for me as an intraday trader that I, where I can control my risk reward, I'm getting short that. And guess what? We had that. I want to mention one more thing. When we trade stocks on the short side, we do have this technology edge. So um, it's much easier for me to get short a stock than most of the other players on the street. So not only do I have a news catalyst behind my idea, but I have a technology edge, which I want to exploit. And so here are the variables that I'm seeing why this stock gives me an edge. All right, we've got the news catalyst, it's very negative. We've got resistance on the intraday chart that's very clear at 11.25. There's a big battle. The damn stock can't trade above 11.25. It's gapped down over 15%. Can't trade above this level. Its first move was down and pretty sharp. I've got an excellent risk reward trade here against this 25 cents. It was trading between 21 and 25. Tried to get above 25 cents once, went up to 27 cents, indicating it can't get above 25 cents. Comes back, holds 25 cents, drops 21, 21 cents. This is the moment. It showed that it can't trade above 25 cents. It showed that 25 cents is a major resistance level. The buyer that was holding it up towards this 25 cents is gone. I tried to hit as many as I could on the bid at 20 cents. I was like all in. I don't care if I lose on this trade. I'm trading this against 27 cents. I think this thing is going down, you know, 10.75. That's what I'm thinking, maybe even lower. It fits my style, all right? This, this trade fits my style. I can control my risk. I can see the moment. I can see an edge that I have on the tape. And this, this trade fits my talents because I tend to think, I, t I think quickly. And so, all these variables are lining up for me and I'm putting the trade on. So, you know, when we talk about, you know, trading with edge, we talk about trading with edge, that's what we're talking about. Now don't tell me I want a short EXPR. Tell me I want a short EXPR for those seven reasons. For those seven reasons. That's a trade, that's what traders do. What are you doing to be a better trader for 2017? Right now is a great time of year to take a step back, assess where you're at, and plan for the new year. SMB can help you do that this year. Spend an entire hour with me. We'll take a look at where you are, uh, maybe find a few holes, and I will give you some specific ways that you can improve and things to look at to take your trading to the next level for the next year. It's $75. If you don't feel like you've gotten uh, value from our conversation and it's been a waste of your time, just let me know at the end of our hour, end of our conversation, and we'll give you your money back, no questions. If you do end up doing more serious training with SMB in the future, you can apply that $75 towards uh, whatever course or mentoring or, wh or whatever it is that you end up doing literally have nothing to lose here. Uh, I look forward to speaking with you over the next couple weeks uh, as we look forward to 2017 and being better traders than we were in 2016.